Ryan Elliott for ID Boxing his press conference there in San Antonio with me, Darren Barker. Darren, I know you've got good memories, San Antonio, nice to be back. Yeah, it is good to be back. Good to see a friendly face as well. I tell you what, it's a fucking long way. It's far. It's uh it's a beautiful um city though. I'm glad to be back, glad to be here supporting my man, um Jesus. Got my little boy here causing carnage. So yeah, great, great. <laughs> You mentioned it there. You're here as a manager this week rather than any media duties. Uh, Jesus Martinez, I just spoke to him. He's just to your left there. Um, fourth pro fight, bit of a step up. What are you expecting from him? Uh, a solid performance. Um, Lopez's opponent's very strong. Uh, he's on a good run of form, won his last three, I think it is. Uh, he's tough, he's solid, he's durable. Um, and, and he comes to win. But I think that's going to bring the best out of Jesus, who is solid. He's a very good operator. Um, I mean, his amateur credentials, multinational champion, 100 odd fights, only a handful of losses, tremendous talent with, with a brilliant future uh, and certainly one to, to watch out for. And do you know what? Most importantly, and it's one of the reasons that me and Joe decided to, to be managers, uh, well, one of the reasons that we decided to, we want to help young fighters, you know, fulfill their dreams, but they've got to be good people. And Jesus is good people. His family are lovely people. And yeah, uh, I would do my utmost to, to help him fulfill his dream. And his dream is to become multi-weight world champion. Big dreams. Uh, he said the same thing to me that he's got that level of aspiration, but just to go back to his second pro fight, you know, he was down. It was a close fight over four rounds. Is that an important lesson for him early on that, look, this is the pros, this is men now. You're not going to have it your own way. No, you're not. You know, the, the, what I've seen is that the guys over the pond here, you know, they're, they're not like journeymen, if you like. They're all looking to win and, uh, and to change their lives and a win over someone like Jesus helps them kickstart their career. So yeah, it was um, a good learning curve for him in you know, his first three pro fights. His first one in Guadalajara, he's a tough guy. And yeah, and the, the, the second one in San Antonio where he suffered the knockdown, which by the way, it wasn't, I mean, he wasn't caught properly with a shot, um, but he went down nonetheless. And look, he's learned a lot, he's still maturing. He's only 18, a, a young 18, and he just turned 18. So there's a lot of maturing to still do, but as far as talent's concerned, Man, the, the, the kid is special. Speaking of special, uh, headliner Jesse Bam Rodriguez this weekend could become a two-weight world champion at 23 years old. How high is his ceiling? Well, I mean, I've just been talking to Jesus who sparred with him and he just said, I feel sorry for his opponent. Uh, I've no doubt he will be a two-weight world champion. He's a very good fighter. Um, his ring IQ is ridiculous. His footwork, his hand speed, his shot selection, the way he does those, he creates those angles, similar to Lomachenko. He's a, he's a very, very good fighter. Um, and, and another one, talking about Jesus being a good lad. Uh, Jesse's a, a, a top top lad too. Really, really nice. No, he, you know, I say no ego, everyone's got an ego, but... Um, you know, he doesn't blow his own trumpet. He's a very, very good fighter. Uh, yeah, and and a lovely lad too. Already talk about if he wins, what's next? Uh, I know Robert Garcia mentioned maybe Estrada at Superfly, but yeah, that was just about to say Sonny Edwards, the fight everyone's talking about. Is that the one it has to be really? Yeah, I think so. Look, you know, we're UK based, obviously, and uh, we know we know all about Sonny Edwards. Um, Sonny fancies his job, very good fight at Sonny. Um, I think it would be a very good fight between them two. I think some people saying it might, they might uh, cancel each other out. I actually don't think it will be. I think it would be sort of, you know, you've heard the expression before, sort of high level chess. And I think it will be. I think it would be. I think it would be great, great um, action. I think, you know, both very good fighters and they both want, they both want the fight. Um, but I know Sonny said that Bam may not fancy it but I, you know when you're you're someone like Bam and you're someone like Sonny there's always opportunities so it's what one you take and when you take it but yeah I, that's, that's the fight I want to see Quick word on Ray Ford uh, comes off a hell of a fight against, yeah. against Jesse Magdaleno is this a case of single swim now time to prove it if you want to be a contender this is a fight you need to win Magdaleno former champ very good fighter uh, but th this is it now speaking to Brian Peters in the gym this morning yes I was in the gym <laughs> Um, and yeah, and he basically said the same thing. Let's go. Let's see how good you are. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good, it's a good opportunity for him. He's a good fighter. Very good fighter. Quick word on AJ. Dust settled now on the win over Jermaine Franklin. You and I have spoken a bit about it off camera. And I know people are quick to, to pick holes and, and you know probably craving that knockout we didn't get. But a win's a win. A win. 
was the most important thing. Get back on track, get back to winning ways, and you can push on to the real big fights. Anyone who knows this game and, and knows their boxing knew that Jermaine Franklin was a, is a very good fighter. You know, very close fight with Dillian White. Uh, could have gone either way. Um, quick hands, good feet, good counter puncher. Former national champion back in the States. A, a, a tough test for a comeback fight for, for AJ. But AJ got the job done. They, they, don't get me wrong. It, there's more to come from AJ, without a shadow of a doubt. But he won comfortably. It's not like he boxed out of his skin and he, and he just won. He, you know, it, there's more to come. And, and he won comfortably. So, look, he got the job done. I can understand a little bit of frustration where, you know, it's AJ. We know that he can knock guys out. It's the heavyweight division, the marquee division in world boxing. You sit down to watch devastating knockouts. But I do think that will come with the right opponent. I think maybe a Dillian White next. There's that bit of bad blood. I think the last time that we see AJ with a bit of fire and spite was when he fought Pulev. And there was a bit of bad blood, wasn't there? The build-up, the presser and all that. And, and AJ took, took it out on him. And I think, you know, that's the sort of dance partner that AJ needs. So he won. He looked good, in my opinion. And the knockout will come. You mentioned the white fight there, you know, there's always the temptation to go, well, let's go for Fury or let's go for Wilder, but do you think the interim fight is the right thing, someone like a Dillian White rematch? And, and, and if I'm deadly honest, I'm not saying this is, that it will happen against Dillian White, but I do feel he needs a knockout, AJ. I think he needs a knockout for that confidence to fully come back. Um, because, look, no doubt, there did look like there was, you know, a little reluctant, he was a little reluctant to commit to the shot. He was hesitating slightly. Boxed well, like I say, but I think he needs a big knockout to then go into those big fights with a Wilder, with a Fury. Um, but the most important thing was the win. One month today, your old mate John Ryder is going into Mexico against one of the pound for pound greats, challenging for the undisputed championship of the world. How excited are you and are you going? Um, I've got to ask some misses <laughs> if I can go, but I, it, it, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I'll go, and, and um, I, I, I should be going there because John's done an awful lot for me. I think Barcole Frotch, John Ryder was the guy I sparred, sparred with most in my career. Um, top top man, and he's 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 proof that if you do lose, but you keep working hard and you don't let it affect you opportunities will come your way and look none come much bigger none much tougher for John Ryder but financially he's going to be able to secure his future uh, look boxing is a tools race you can't completely rule him out um, he know he's got a knack John of bringing you uh, dragging you into his style of fight he's physically very very strong now super middleweight um, I'm going to be rooting I'm going to be screaming screaming that he does the business. I'm a big fan of Canelo, he's a, he's a legend, but JR's my man and, uh, and, you know, I'm just buzzing he's got this shot. He, he deserves it. Like, seeing him in the big bright lights, it suits him and I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's there. A couple more before I let you go because press conference starting very soon. Um, Amir Khan, been a whirlwind 72 hours, a two-year ban from UCAD uh, for a, a failed post-fight test against Kel Brook. I'm sure you've read a little bit about it. What do you made of what we saw? Do you know what? I like, I, I'm disappointed in, in kind of everything, um, but there, there's, there's a grey area here. I, I don't get what all this lack of communication is and something's got to, something's got to change between, you know, whether it be the, the board, the governing bodies, the, 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 doping control where it's Vada UK like I don't I just don't get it enough I don't understand why there's this lack in communication between all parties um, but hopefully we can get this resolved because I'm a fan of the sport I want to see I want to see this sport be as good as it can be um, it, it, there is a bit of a cloud at the minute over boxing but it's always stood the test of time boxing. It will always come good, I'm, I'm sure, and it will work its way through this sticky period. You mentioned the communication there. I'm sure you're referring to the fact that, that Kel Brook and promoter Ben Shalom, they didn't know until it came out on social media the other day. With that said, I'm sure the board will say they follow protocol, they had to keep their confidentiality. 
is that where the problem lies? You mentioned the communication. Do, do things need to change whereby more parties do learn about these things? It's, it's similar to White Rivas in a way where Oscar Rivas didn't know. Yeah, like I, again, this is the politics side of things that I don't quite understand, you know, in the... the, the the, the having to keep it quiet and blah blah blah. I just it, I, I don't understand it enough. But you know, as a as a fighter, you'd want to know what's going on. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, look, I, I'm just hoping that somehow it all just works and we you know we can get a a, a better boxing. Last one, because I can see people starting to filter in that room behind us. Um, Ellie Scottney, I'm sure you read a statement about being pulled off the, the Taylor Cameron card. Chantel Cameron put out a statement and said that that was the case and, and she didn't want the distractions. I know Ellie Scottney will still get a world title fight, but the point is she wanted to share a card with her idol, a world title fight. It was a big night for her too. Did, how much do you sympathise with, with what's going on with Ellie Scottney? Look, I, I 100% I get it. Ellie's a, a very good fighter, um, a good person, and, and she deserves her opportunity on big cards. But... This is Chantel Cameron's biggest moment in her career, maybe the biggest moment she will have in her career. And if she's not, if she feels that those being around are going to sort of take something away from her performance, potentially, then, she, you know, she has to do what she's done. I get it. I totally understand it. This is boxing. It's an individual sport. It's a selfish sport. You've got to do what's right for you. And though I feel for Ellie, She'll have her, she will have her opportunities. I've no doubt that Ellie will get to a stage in her career where she's top of the bill and she'll be able to call the shots. I no doubt, knowing Matram, knowing Eddie, she, she will be given a, a big opportunity. But I think it's right for, for Chantel to, to do what she's done, if I'm deadly honest. You know, it's, it's a massive moment for her and she has to, she has to be selfish. I, I, I get it. All right, Darren, press comments about start, so I'll let you go. Thank you, Zoe, speaking to ID Boxing.